Hey guys, welcome back to another Destiny 2 video. Before we get into anything, whether it's raw numbers or situational uses and advantages, let me just sum up Lorely Splendor Helm for you in one word. Broken. This exotic, I would strongly argue, is currently the best PvP exotic for Titans in the entire game. Now, this isn't reaching day one Ursa's or one-eyed level, but I would not rock anything else over these currently. Even the Dune Marchers that I've been using to hit people in different zip codes for the past few months, I've taken a backseat to this beast of an exotic. So what exactly does Lorely Splendor Helm do? Simple. Having Sun Warrior now slowly heals you, which I'll show a comparison side by side now for one with this exotic on and one without this exotic on. And when you're critically wounded, you now spawn a Sunspot at your location. Now for those that aren't familiar with Sunspots or Sun Warrior, this might not sound too crazy. I mean, honestly, the healing isn't that great, but it's definitely appreciated. What makes this exotic truly broken is its ability to spawn sunspots on you when you're critically wounded. Let's make a quick rundown real quick for what sunspots do for those who aren't familiar. 1. They increase all ability regens, and it's very noticeable. 2. They provide a 20% damage buff to all weapons when you have Sun Warrior active. Just a few notes on that. Something like Sun Warrior's 20% buff, at a minimum, makes all high fire rate weapons like SMGs, autos, and sidearms have a decreased time to kill and flat out require less headshots for the same base time to kill without Sun Warrior. It also allows 120s to two tap guardians in PvP, which is something that I use. And for something like Chaperone, which I'm sure is still haunting most of you, you can one shot body shot mid tier resilience guardians. Number three, getting a kill with Sun Warrior can also spawn a sunspot at the defeated enemy's location. And this can potentially lead to sunspot chains in PvP, although it's very hard considering that you have to start one of these off by getting a solar ability kill. Number four, Sun Warrior is granted to Guardians upon entering a sunspot. However, its five second duration won't go down until the sunspot dies or the Guardian leaves the sunspot. If they just sit in the sunspot, they'll have it for as long as they're there. Number five. Solar ability kills regain a portion of your health back, and this includes enemy guardians dying within the sunspot. I will say, they did slightly nerf this in PvP. It went significantly down to 75 HP per second for guardians walking through your sunspot. So while it's not going to be shredding full health guardians that simply touch it anymore, it's definitely more of a cleanup tool that can still easily kill some weakened guardians. So with this already being on the subclass, why does this exotic helmet deserve the title of Best PvP Titan Exotic? Simple. It bypasses the requirement for spawning sunspots. The healing isn't even the best thing with this. It's nice, but it's not what makes it broken. Like I said earlier, sunspots are normally spawned in when you get a solar ability kill or when you cast your super and throw hammers. And that's pretty much it. And with this requirement, you usually only had a handful of sunspots per game. Even after solar ability changes, we're talking single digits for spawn sunspots in one match. For example, I ran a regular game of Crucible without this helmet on just as a test, and I spawned a total of 9 sunspots, including the ones in my super. With this helm, my first game, where I did absolutely nothing different, I spawned in 29 sunspots, including the ones in my super. With this exotic on, you will have a sunspot each life, along with the benefits that I mentioned earlier that come with Sun Warrior. And here's where it gets better. You can self-proc sunspots to spawn on you. Use any weapon with ricochet rounds, like this Aikilos SMG with Seraph rounds here. Just walk up to a wall and shoot. And congratulations, after a few shots, you're now critically wounded and a sunspot can spawn at your location. In addition, even when you die in one shot, where you aren't technically critically wounded, you'll still spawn these in your location. So what exactly does this mean? Well, let me just break down a few noteworthy things that you can do with this. One, don't want to push into a gunfight without having your abilities first. Just find a corner, proc this, wait about five to six seconds, and congratulations, you now have all of your abilities back. Lost your shotgun fight? Well, now your sunspot can clean him up for you as he runs towards your body pickup special ammo. He runs into that AoE damage pool that now spawned in your location. Peeking a sniper lane and got body shot by the other guy? Well, now you have a mini AoE healing rift that heals you, buffs your damage, increases all your ability recharge rates, it can change your next defeat's location. Or do you simply want the 20% gunfight every single time you go to fight someone? Just proc it yourself. 
This exotic breaks the rigorous requirements for spawning sunspots in normally and just allows you to do it simply by playing. And if you want to put a minuscule amount of thought to your gameplay, you can just do it whenever. And yes, it also procs in your super because, I mean, why not at this point? I will quickly mention that in PvE, this exotic is decent. However, the healing effect is at best on par with Well of Life and spawning sunspots is much easier in PvE than PvP. I would still rock Phoenix Cradles or Path of Burning Steps over this, but it's definitely not the worst option you could pick. Again, the biggest benefit to using Laurelly Splendor Helm is simply the ability to choose whenever you want a Sunspot spawn in your location. And again, are you low in your abilities and just want to wait for a few seconds and get them back? You can do this by self-procking. Do you just want to enter a gunfight with a 20% buff? Again, you can just do this by self-procking. Again, I use a 120 normally and something like Sun Warrior, which again, I got basically all the time using this exotic, turns it into a two-tapping monster. This exotic is absolutely absurd. I'll have another review out soon for the exotic chess piece, but I'm putting this out first so when you get to pick one after completing the Witch Queen Legendary campaign, you pick this one. Seriously, this is the best exotic for PvP Titans right now. Hands down, no contest. That's all for today right now, guys. I'm going to get to work on the next exotic review as well as the first build guide that I actually used to solo the Legend campaign. However, in the meantime, if you're struggling with the Legendary campaign on Titan, highly recommend you check out my Godslayer Titan build. It's one of the best builds on the channel for a reason, and believe me when I say this, it makes the entire Legend campaign an absolute joke. But thank you again for watching. If you liked the video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more Destitute content like this, and let me know what videos on Witch Queen content you'd like to see. Again, more build guides coming soon. Thanks again, and have a good one.